Once a staple of the British airline industry, and the face of the emerging foreign holiday market during the late 1960s and early 1970s, Courtline's spell as a provider of low-cost vacations was merely a fraction of its overall history, with the legacy of the name itself stretching back to before World War I, when aviation was in its infancy and shipping ruled international travel. The Court Line was established originally in 1905 as a shipping company by British Jewish businessman Philip Holdenstein, who developed the firm under the Holdenstein & Co. Limited brand, which specialised in operating tramp steamers across the vast influence of the British Empire, with their first vessel, Arlington Court, being delivered in October of that year by the Robert Stevenson & Company shipyard of Hebburn on the River Tyne. Expanding rapidly throughout the 1900s and into the 1910s, by the outbreak of World War I in 1914, the Holdenstein Company operated a vast array of tramp steamers through its ongoing contract with the Robert Stevenson Company, operating seven vessels which helped to supply the war effort during the height of the vicious conflict, as well as seeing an eighth vessel added in 1915, the 1911-built Dale Bank, which was renamed the Ilvington Court, although this ship's tenure with the firm was short-lived, as on December 6, 1917, it was torpedoed and sunk off the north coast of Algeria, near Cape Chechel, by U-34, resulting in the deaths of eight crew. During the same year as the Dale Bank's purchase, due to a strong backlash developing against German-sounding names, Philip chose to shorten the Teutonic-sounding Holdenstein title to simply the Holden Line, and following the end of World War I in 1918, the firm undertook a major refurbishment of its fleet, by selling off its original pre-war vessels in place of improved designs that would be delivered throughout the 1920s, reducing the number of vessels on its books to just two vessels by 1921, before expanding back to 26 ships by the middle of the decade, including a mixture of brand new vessels outshopped by the Tyneside shipyards, or second-hand vessels which themselves were only two to three years old, each of which maintained the naming convention of Ington Court. Amidst the loss of two ships in 1937 within a fortnight of each other, the Nollington Court in the Caribbean, and the Quarrington Court in the Red Sea, the Holden Line, now renamed to Holden and Phillips Limited in 1929, upon the arrival of Lawrence Phillips as business partner within the firm, saw massive expansion up to the start of World War II in 1939, the Holden and Phillips Company, from the following year, taking on the management of government-owned Empire merchant ships on behalf of the Ministry of War Transport, while during the conflict itself, Holden lost 14 vessels and 136 lives, 13 of which were due to enemy action, while the last, the Ovington Court, was beached at Durban in South Africa during 1940 and later scrapped. With the end of the war in 1945, the Empire ships which had been operated on behalf of the government reverted to the ownership of the Holden Company, and the firm's shipbuilding contracts with the Tyneside dockyards continued until 1957, when, following the Suez Crisis, a severe drop in freight rates meant there was no longer the demand to justify such a large fleet resulting in an end to the contract that same year, and the selling off of many of the line's older vessels to try and cut overhead. Instead, the holding company, which was now almost exclusively known as the Court Line due to the naming convention of its ships, moved from tramp steamers to tankers, as the demand for fuel and other oil-based products began to rise, their first tanker being the second-hand bought Edith Borthen, which was renamed to Halcyon Days, while their second vessel, which was purchased new by the company, was, for the first time, not built by a British shipyard, instead being ordered from Hitachi of Japan and delivered under the name Halcyon Breeze, starting a brand new naming convention for their future tanker ships, which would adopt the first name Halcyon. It was at this time that an airline dubbed Autair was established during the mid-1950s as a helicopter operator, before expanding into public transport services following the purchase of several ex-British European Airways Douglas C-47 Dakotas and Vickers Vikings, running both freight and passenger flights within the UK and Western Europe, in competition with larger established firms like Danair and BEA, their main party piece being their early investment in the emerging market for inclusive tours to sunnier climates such as Spain, Italy and North Africa. From 1963, Autair began to run day tripper flights in cooperation with tour group Clarkson's, initially performing a day return service from 10 different UK airports to Rotterdam in the Netherlands during the Dutch bulb field season these new services helping to rapidly boost their income and allow for the purchase of Handley Page Dart Herald turboprop airliners to replace the older C-47s and Vikings on commuter flights between London Luton and Glasgow via Blackpool and Luton to Teesside Airport, while airspeed ambassadors were brought in to operate freight services. With Clarkson's Tours, later to become Clarkson's Holidays, being a dedicated customer to Autair, 
The firm continued to spread its influence across the emerging low-cost tour market to the near continent, but was hamstrung somewhat by the seasonal nature of its most profitable operations, the tour services to Europe being offset by the distinct losses of the off-peak season, while the domestic commuter services across the UK were only able to fight for crumbs against the might of Danair and BEA in the regulated British airliner market. Facing severe losses during 1965, Courtline, seeing the potential of Autair's tourist operations, purchased 100% of the airline's capital for £215,000, and with the investment of the shipping line's highly lucrative tanker services, a full refresh of Autair was undertaken in order to make both its tourist and scheduled services competitive with the likes of BEA, starting with the purchase of brand new BAC 111-400s in 1968 to run tourist flights, while the Dart Heralds were put to work on the scheduled commuter flights. Expanding its fleet of BAC 111s to five aircraft by 1969, each of these units carried 500,000 passengers on tourist routes across Europe per year, while by comparison the scheduled services only carried a mere 66,000 passengers. The £150,000 losses incurred on the scheduled services to Belfast, Glasgow, Blackpool, Dublin, Amsterdam, the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man, resulting in a request being lodged by the airline to the British government in order to subsidise all but one of these services, the exception being the Heathrow to Teesside run, which was the only service to make a profit. However, with the interests of the British government being set firmly with their own nationalised domestic carrier, BEA, the request for subsidies was denied by Parliament, and in response, Autair opted to exit all scheduled operations within the UK and focus solely on its tourist workings, and, following the purchase of seven 119-seat BAC 111-500 aircraft in 1970, the Autair name was dropped in favour of Courtline Aviation, which replaced the previous and more corporate-looking white and navy blue cheatline livery with an array of colourful hues ranging from green to pink, yellow, orange and red. With the new Courtline name coming into effect on January 1st, 1970, the airline continued its long-standing partnership with Clarkson's Holidays, the business of which accounted for 70% of Courtline's tourist traffic upon its establishment, or 770,000 passengers per annum, the contract between the tour operator and the airline allowing for both companies to undercut the competition, while the eye-catching and light-hearted look of Courtline's fleet meant they were highly attractive to other inclusive tour customers. Seeing that the more traditional tourist operations of the 1950s were now being heavily undermined by low-cost inclusive tours, other airlines and tour operators quickly changed their strategies in order to combat Courtline and its highly successful business model, but Clarkson's and Courtline remained strong against this new wave of fierce competition moving into their market, ruthlessly undercutting rivals and outbidding them to win the race for securing accommodation in popular overseas holiday resorts, especially in Spain, allowing for holidays in Mallorca and the Costa del Sol to become affordable to average British families, presenting superb alternatives to the often unreliable weather of UK resort towns in Devon, Cornwall, Yorkshire and the South Coast. Furthermore, Courtline and Clarkson's pioneered a British variant of the time charter concept, whereby the airline entered into a long-term relationship with the tour operator in a manner similar to long-term arrangements between ship owners and charterers in the oil tanker business, resulting in greater economic security for the charter airline and enabled it to acquire new aircraft on more favourable terms, rather than having to face full liability during off-season periods when foreign tourism was slumping. Another innovation of Courtline was through the provision of packed lunches stored in seat-back catering pouches, whereby prepared meals, usually comprising spam salads on outbound journeys and sandwiches on return workings, were provided at seat for the use of every passenger, resulting in the provision of additional seating aboard Courtline aircraft in place of galleys, a market-leading strategy that presented among the best cost-saving measures in the airline industry, and forcing rivals to introduce similar seat-back food services in order to remain competitive. Courtline's moment of glory truly came in April 1973, when the company purchased, at a cost of $55 million, two modified Lockheed L-1011 TriStar widebody airliners registered Golf Bravo Alpha 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 and Golf Bravo Alpha Alpha Bravo, which were custom-built to include double-width cabin doors for increased passenger loading capacity and integral air stairs and baggage conveyors for use at airports with limited passenger handling facilities. These modified L-1011s, of which a small batch were also purchased by German tourist airline LTU, being the only wide bodies, aside from the later Ilyushin IL-86 of the Soviet Union, to include the built-in air stair feature. The purchase of the L-1011s, however, was a major gamble by Courtline, as with the capacity of 472 passengers, nearly four times that of the BAC-111-500s, 
higher numbers of tourists could be transported with fewer frequencies, while at the same time, the increased range presented by the L-1011s helped to support Clarkson's proposed expansion to destinations in the United States and the Caribbean, opening up these destinations to lower-income UK families in a time when such holiday locations were exclusively for affluent travellers. The establishment of these new package holiday corridors being supported through Courtline's acquisition of a 75% share in the Antigua-based inter-island carrier Leeward Islands Air Transport, or LEAT. Courtline presenting the airline with a BAC 111 500 from 1971 to operate scheduled passenger services across the Caribbean on busier routes to replace sluggish Hawker Sidley HS 748s. Such was the faith in the success of TriStar operations with Courtline that to ensure the utmost efficiency and maintenance of the aircraft, a brand new hangar was constructed at Luton Airport to accommodate the wide-body airliners, while, in the event of a potential breakdown of the Rolls-Royce RB211 engines at an overseas location, a worrying and expensive prospect for the management due to the tight profit margins of the carrier, a former Royal Air Force Blackburn Beverly cargo transporter was purchased to carry a spare RB211 to wherever the TriStar may have been stranded, although in the event, the Beverly was never actually used in this capacity. Sadly, in the face of all these enthusiastic prospects, Courtline's business practice was incredibly unstable, primarily due to its dependence on Clarkson's holidays, which accounted for 40% of its annual revenue, combined with the narrow profit margins innate to low-cost carriers such as these, meaning the carrier suffered when, for the 1971 financial year, Clarkson's reported a loss of £2.6 million, despite an average annual turnover of £31 million, equating to an overall loss of approximately £4 per passenger served, the reasons being due to the sudden arrival of major competitors such as Thompson Holidays and Horizon Holidays during the early 1970s, which swept away the firm's monopoly. Of course, Courtline's fragile fiscal situation was revealed to devastating effect on October 19, 1973, following the introduction of an oil embargo by the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, against multiple Western nations due to their support of Israel in the Yom Kippur War, resulting in the price of oil spiking and passenger numbers collapsing as the cost of living rose in the ensuing economic recession, 1974, prior to the outbreak of 2020, being the worst peacetime year for British overseas tourism on record. The effects of the 1973 oil crisis, combined with a three-day working week enacted by the Heath government due to a crippling miners' strike, meant holiday bookings collapsed by 30%, and Clarkson's holidays, together with Horizon holidays, fell into administration, Courtline purchasing Clarkson's for a derisory sum of just £1, but having to invest £3.4 million into the tour operator just to cover its losses for the 1973 fiscal year, while at the same time, in order to drum up as much tourist demand as possible, Courtline also acquired a 58% share in Horizon Holidays at a cost of £600,000, or £6.3 million in 2021, helping to bring that firm out of administration, the deal with Horizon stipulating that for each Horizon customer, one pound of their charge would be paid to Courtline. These various acquisitions may have bought Courtline some time, but in reality did very little to secure its long-term future, as the tourist industry continued to reel in the aftermath of the oil crisis the irony being that the prospects of the Horizon deal were in fact the fatal blow that killed Courtline, as upon the buyout of the majority share in the tour operator in February 1974 and the diversion of tourist traffic to the carrier, British Caledonian, a rival airline specialising in low-cost holidays to Europe and beyond, threatened to have Horizon coercively wound up if the Courtline group did not agree to settle Horizon's outstanding debt of over £100,000, or £1.06 million in 2021, forcing the group to sub-charter a fully crewed BCAL BAC-111 jet for Horizon's flying programme, and to provide it with additional business. Further to the BCAL compensation settlement, Thomas Cook introduced a money-back guarantee to their tour services, offering financial security for prospective customers in a manner that didn't exist with either Clarkson's or Horizon, and thereby drew a significant chunk of the tourist market, only adding to the significant losses being incurred by both Horizon and, by extension, Courtline, who had no dealings with Thomas Cook, while Clarkson's, out of desperation, continued selling holiday packages at a significant loss, with a fortnight all-inclusive holiday to Mallorca being priced for as little as £50, or £532 in 2021. The economic stagnation of the UK throughout 1974, including a major drop in shipping due to dockyard strikes, meant that Courtline's maritime activities were also affected greatly. The company's own shipbuilding facilities at Appledore in Devon and Sunderland on Wearside, 
which had been purchased in the early 1960s, losing all demand and being run at a major financial burden to the wider court line group. The company opting to sign a deal with the government of newly elected Prime Minister Harold Wilson to sell these shipbuilding facilities to state ownership for £60 million. This, however, wasn't enough to stem the massive losses, and on August 15, 1974, the Court Line Group collapsed into bankruptcy, with all flights cancelled, seeing 1,150 staff made redundant and stranding 49,000 holidaymakers overseas with no contingency as to how they could be returned home. The rival tourist operators and airlines, including B. Cal and Thomas Cook, organising a series of rescue flights to repatriate Court Line customers at no extra charge in association with the Tour Operators Study Group, or TOSG. The costs for this action being covered, through a £3.5 million bond the collapsed court line had deposited with the TOSG just prior to their bankruptcy. The following day, all of the UK-based subsidiaries of the court line group were liquidated, and the group's overseas subsidiaries, such as LIAT in the Caribbean and the South Africa-based court line helicopters, were acquired by their respective governments. Eleven Caribbean nations purchasing shares in LIAT so as to ensure that vital inter-island operations were maintained, while in order to mitigate the effects of a major tour operator collapsing in the future, the TOSG established the Association of British Travel Agents, or ABTA, creating a fund that would provide insurance against the costs of repatriating stranded tourists if circumstances such as the bankruptcy of Courtline were ever repeated. In truth, while Courtline Aviation only lasted four years, the impact the carrier had on the face of low-cost British tourism was beyond profound as it introduced to low-income UK families the concept of package holidays to Europe and the Caribbean, which were affordable and accessible to the mass market, rather than being enjoyed solely by the rich. But with the loss of the carrier's monopoly on this rising market, together with its widespread diversification into loss-making subsidiaries, meant that all it took was an event like the 1973 oil crisis to truly reveal how fragile the company's finances really were, and in so doing ensuring the firm's rapid demise.